Mr. Fang grew up in Bac Ninh Province, east of Hanoi in Vietnam. His unhappy childhood was marked with fear and misery, an experience which lasted well into his twenties. However, that was before he made an incredible discovery, one that led him to finally find an inner peace. Fang grew up in the countryside with his mother, father and brother. But what might have been an idyllic rural upbringing was ruined by the actions of Fang's dad. An extremely abusive man, Fang's father would savagely beat his wife on a regular basis. Being mere children, Fang and his brother were powerless to intervene. So they were forced to witness the beatings and the abuse, the cruelty of which is difficult to comprehend. Fang's father was a brutal and volatile character who would regularly attack the children's mother over the most trivial of matters. Sometimes, Fang's father would force his wife outside even in the depths of winter. On other occasions, he would physically drag her to a pond and hold her head under the water. Fang even recalls his father pouring scalding hot soup on his mother's head, as if that wasn't enough. Fang's father also had a bizarre and heartbreaking tradition that he would religiously follow. At the start of every year, he would beat Fang's mother. And this perverse annual ritual would lead to Fang associating the smell of New Year's incense with his mother's suffering. Disturbingly, Fang's grandfather would actually encourage these beatings, egging on the abuse. Beat her to death. Beat her to death. The sadistic old man would yell. These two were the men, supposedly the role models, even, in Fang's life, understandably, given what was going on behind closed doors, people stayed away from Fang's house. Their number included other schoolchildren, meaning Fang was isolated for much of his childhood. Moreover, he wasn't able to take part in extracurricular activities because his father would always demand he came home. Unsurprisingly, the cycle of abuse and loneliness had a deep and lasting effect on Fang. Consequently, his general health suffered and he became chronically ill. This sorry state of affairs lasted until 2005 when the tormented young man realized he'd had enough. Aged 19, Fang left home vowing to escape a living nightmare. However, although Fang managed to leave the place where he'd grown up, he could not escape it. The sickness he'd struggled with as a child stayed with him. Subsequently, he also suffered from sinus infections, asthma, hepatitis B and even problems with his heart. Furthermore, he found himself consumed by hatred for his father and for his father's side of the family. Fang was unable to forgive his father for the mental and physical abuse he had doled out. And his general unhappiness was probably not made any easier by the knowledge that his mother had remained behind. In all likelihood she was still suffering, Fang's mother had actually found the courage to leave her brutish husband and move to Hanoi. What's more, she even divorced the violent thug and began her own business in the city. However, she found it too difficult being away from her children. As a result, she actually moved back to Bac Nine and her ex-husband. Ultimately, Fang's mother was eventually able to break free, and she moved to southern Vietnam to be with Fang. Yet by now the young man was suffering from depression. Despite outwardly appearing to be stable, he'd even started studying at a vocational college, inside Fang was struggling. Even without the influence of his controlling father, Fang was still isolated. But now, it was because he had isolated himself and was suffering from strong negative feelings. He continually asked himself why no one had ever tried to intervene and protect his mother from his father's savagery. It was in that moment, crippled with mental health issues and physical illness, that Fang found his salvation at the age of 27. Yet he hadn't been looking to help himself. He'd been looking to help his mom. Fang's mother was very sick, and he had been searching online for anything that might help her. That was when he discovered Falun Dafa meditation and subsequently found the book Zhuan Falun. As he made his way through the book, Fang felt that it might have the answer to his continuing, 
toxic hatred of his father, truthfulness, zen, compassion, shan, and forbearance, ran, lie at the heart of Falun Dafa, which was first taught in China in the 1990s. The practice focuses on morality and theology. Its practitioners are supposed to let go of emotional attachments, like Fang did. Unfortunately, some Falun Dafa practitioners have been the target of a vicious crackdown in China, where the movement is considered by some to be a threat to government. Some reports claim that thousands of people have been murdered and there have even been gruesome allegations that believers were killed for their organs. But Fang, even if he knew of these, was seemingly unmoved. Indeed, he began following the meditative practices he learned about with much enthusiasm. And he was pleasantly surprised at the results. In fact, the technique was so successful at dealing with his deep-seated issues that after three years Fang felt confident enough to stop taking his medications. He didn't even feel the need to visit the hospital anymore. Fang found that he was better able to push aside the angry feelings he had held on to for so long. In essence, it used to be that whenever he heard the name of his hometown, it would trigger something bad inside him. After practice in Falun Dafa, though, he found that this was no longer the case. Nowadays, Fang still practices his Falun Dafa but does so with his friends and even some members of his family. He claims that the meditation and its accompanying text have transformed him and healed his soul. His story is an uplifting one, and although it's not clear what happened to his father, it's unlikely that Fang still bears a grudge.